Lumbar spinal stenosis is when the nerves in the lower part of the spine are being squeezed or suffocated. This is a case presentation of a 60-year-old female that I evaluated and treated for her spinal stenosis. So let's take a look at these x-rays. This is a lateral view of the spine. The patient has severe disc collapse as well as something called spondylolisthesis. That's where one bone slips forward on the other from severe arthritis of the joints. This severe arthritis would then pinch the nerves and cause shooting down pain down the butt, down the thighs, down the legs. This is the straight on view. Look at the significant amount of scoliosis. The bone is collapsing sideways and the spine is crooked. You'll see a sneak peek of how I fix it. This will be our MRI that helps me see the spinal nerves as well as the nerve roots. At 2-3, no sniffing on pathology. At 3-4, there's severe spinal stenosis. At 4-5, we see additional further slippage, spinal stenosis, and at 5-1, there is severe bone-on-bone -bone collapse, resulting in severe foraminal stenosis. This still image shows a side view where the nerves are being severely pinched. In general, three and four go to the front of the thigh, whereas L5-S1 go to the back of the thigh, shooting all the way down the leg. A CT scan is a great way to look at the bone anatomy. This patient has severe facet arthritis, where the bones rub against each other, and it's like sandpaper, bone rubbing on bone. There is severe disc collapse at L4-L5 and L5-S1, severe facet arthritis at L3, L4. Next step is to get the patient better. I meet with the patient as well as the family, and then I get ready for the operative theater. The most important part besides scrubbing in is my operative boots, of course. In the OR, I'll go over our preoperative planning. I'll go over the minimally invasive tools I use to get this better, and I make sure everyone is on the same page. For big deformity cases, I'll use a CT scan as well as robotic navigation for an extra level of efficiency and safety. To correct the complete collapse at both 5-1 and the slip at both 3-4 and 4-5, I used a 3D printed titanium inner body cage that inserted in these disc space and opened up the nerve tunnels in the back and then stabilized it in the back with pedicle screws. Look at these nerve tunnels, look at the reduction, and look at the improved curvature known as lordosis in the spine. This is what I consider a great success. The patient's six months out from surgery and she's doing fantastic. While patients understandably are eager to avoid a fusion, this is a case where the bones were already fusing together bone spurs were already growing and we had to correct the scoliosis. Her post-operative course is very typical for most of my patients. This type of surgery to fix the severe spinal stenosis is about a four to six hour surgery. I do it all in one day. The key part of my recovery is getting the patient up and walking on day zero. That day in the hospital, I want them up and working in physical therapy. The patients stay in the hospital two to three nights and I hope to kind of share these case examples to help give patients additional information as well as confidence about their spine surgery.